Hello, I'm Dennis Bullen. One of my favorite parts about being president and CEO of Virtual Health is getting to know our colleagues and the many ways they are here for good. Each person contributes to healthy communities, and each person has a story to tell. Let's meet one. So, Mike, welcome to Here for Good. Thank you. So, tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do here at Virtua. So, I'm a proud second-generation paramedic. My grandmother was a paramedic for West Jersey and Virtua, put an entire career in. So, I've had a variety of roles as a paramedic myself, from special operations to flight paramedic to staff paramedic. I currently work in our clinical education department. Clinical education. So tell me what type of training do we do here at Virtua? My team is responsible for a variety of training initiatives, um, everything from recurrency training to new hire onboarding to ENT curriculum education. So I hear we also have a pretty unique program for high school students. What is the purpose of that? So we have a world-class EMT program, and we forge partnerships with local high schools, uh, one of which is the Camden City School District where we offer seniors certified education during their high school uh, curriculum to become EMTs. How's it going? It's going great. We've had uh, over 100 students total in the program. We currently have almost 50, 20 of which are high school seniors. What, what is it that you think attracts them to that line of work? So we feel like uh, the training that we offer is the front door to the health system. Uh, we encourage our students to follow pathways of passion that could be healthcare, it could be EMS, it could be technology. Uh, we wholly believe that the training we provide in EMS uh, is transferable to any job that they take. Speaking of your training, I know that something unique happened here, here recently. You had a 100% first time pass rate on the exam. What, what does that mean for the students as well as for virtual? I believe the students feel like they're well prepared for the exam, mm -hmm. and we can lead into that with those success rates. It's a testament to the dedication of our educators and training coordinators that invest in the curriculum, invest in the students. Um, but we're really proud to stand behind that 100% pass rate, and we believe the graduates of this program are workforce ready. They can go into the field settings, and the public and our colleagues can know that they're in good hands. So it's something about being workforce ready. You can't always practice on real people. I know that this program has a unique um, training tool or training aid, which are the mannequins that you use for training purposes. So we have a high fidelity simulation family. We have an adult male, uh, a birthing female, so a pregnant female, and then a pediatric child, he's five years old. Um, and they really bridge the gap from textbook and lecture-based learning mm -hmm. to clinical practice. So anything you do on a human being, you can do on these high fidelity simulators. Do they give you similar responses to where a real human being would give that person this training such that they could so that have as natural of an interaction as possible? Certainly, um, that's where we insert the education early. Um, you know, to have an interpersonal reaction takes practice. Mm -hmm. And our students get repetitions with that. Isn't it a little weird initially for the students to have this life-like mannequin responding to them? Yeah, certainly. It's a soft entry to break down those barriers and, uh -huh. and uncomfortabilities. Because I'm a little uncomfortable just talking about it. Y so yeah. I could imagine someone that's actually having to work on a mannequin for the first time and to see that response and the interaction can be a little you know, offsetting, but it prepares them for real life. Certainly. We want to mimic real life environments and real life occurrences inside these training areas. So we do that in simulated suites that have the appearance of a living room, a bedroom, a children's room, a hospital a setting, that our students can use these high fidelity simulators in those environments and get an immersive experience that prepares them for the real world. So we're not in that environment. We're in the studio here, but I'm told you brought some of your friends along with you. Yes, we have one of them here today. So before we start, does he have a name? So we call him Hal Jr. He's part of the simulation family. Okay, why, why Jr.? So we have an adult male uh, that we use as uh, simulation. So yeah, we use him as a father figure. So this would be uh, part of that family. And share with me some of the things in terms of how this mannequin is used to help train some of the technicians. So anything you do on a real life patient, you could do on 
the simulation family that we have. Everything from invasive procedures like vascular access, but also uh, patient assessment findings like blood pressures or blood glucose assessments or physical exams you can do on this. So if a physical exam is being done, the student was to manipulate Junior's ankle. He could respond with, My ankle hurts! And we can build simulated interactions around those responses. So we have reliable education where students feel safe failing and learning and trying again uh, in our learning environments. And we couldn't do that without realistic training exercises like we have with Al Jr. And so as your students sort of talk about and reference back to their training, is this part of it a highlight? Is this something that they would rank as perhaps one of the most valuable tools that they have had? Certainly, we try to build a diverse curriculum for them. But from their arrival on campus till their graduation, they're most excited to work with the simulation family. How many colleagues have we trained? Our simulation family touches all areas of our department. So whether you're a critical care nurse entering our department or a paramedic that uh, is transitioning job careers, you can come to us and use these simulators in varying training exercises. I mean, clearly this is a critical part of the training. I know that there are some real demands out there now for EMTs, for, for paramedics. Um, does this help to expedite the training program in order to get as many folks in the field as we would hope? Uh, absolutely. The evolution of technology is tremendous, and to be able to have that in our classroom settings is phenomenal. And, and like we said, uh, being able to duplicate what they're going to experience outside of our education is important, and we want our providers to feel comfortable in all environments. When they enter an ambulance, they know what to do and how to do it, and this is a, such an important tool for that. Which, which I agree. I think one of the things about EMTs and, and paramedics is they're always having to be ready and prepared to deal with the unknown. Uh, what about when you're not working, when you're not training, what do you do to sort of help balance your mindset, your disposition? What takes you away from the stress of this particular job? So I, I love working in virtual. I love all the roles I've had clinically, but when I'm not working, I'm spending time with my family. We have a a six-year-old little girl who keeps us busy and active, everything from Phillies games to dance class. Uh, I'm excited to spend time with them and, and value that time together and certainly allows me to decompress. Is she old enough yet to understand what daddy does? Not exactly. Uh, she's come to campus to be able to see some of these things. Has she met Junior here? She has. I, I imagine they're about the same size. They are. Okay. Yes, yeah. Uh, this is a five-year-old, so she's a small six-year-old, so exactly the same height, same stature. Uh, she's impressed and she's excited to know that I come to work and really enjoy what I do. Well, Mike, thank you so much for all that you do for Virtua, for this community, and how you really commit to training the best possible EMTs and, and paramedics that we can have in this community. So thank you so much for your service. Of course. Thank you. Once again, thank you for joining us for another exciting episode. Tune in next time for our next edition of Here Forget the Inside Edition. This is Hal Jr. What's up, Hal?